Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today is actually Halloween, and so happy Halloween to all of you guys out there. And I got a few things I need to do for my favorite uh, guy in all of the great state of uh, New Jersey, good old Pete, the Jersey knife guy himself. I just wanted to show him a couple of things because uh, we'd been talking, but he told me about this thing with the... Uh, how to close this one-handed so I just wanted to let him know that I had kind of practiced and figured it out and you know kind of wanted to let him know that yeah your uh, system works and I like it uh, doing it one-handed is uh, is a good deal on this little SOG uh, Twitch 2 and without any other uh, stuff what we got here is he was talking about the Weha tools. This is the first uh, Weha screwdriver that I bought with the uh, magnetic bit. It'll take the uh, the quarter inch uh, bits and stuff. Uh, as you can tell, it's so used that there's no writing left uh, hardly at all. Even the uh, the barcode that was there is gone. Uh, I got this uh, back in I think probably around 1998, and I've been using this one you know, forever in a day. Uh, but then I wanted to show him the new one because he's talking about the ones with the uh, the cap and stuff that holds everything. And so this is also a magnetic one, but this one has a caddy in here, which is really cool. So you push down on the uh, button, it comes out, this folds up uh, and there you go. You have eight bits at your disposal, nine with one in the, uh, thing and what I really like is is how this just folds right out of the way how's that for engineering and it's all in plastic too Weha unfortunately doesn't make uh, this model anymore I think you can still get them on the uh, secondhand uh, market but he was talking about their bits uh, being hardened and stuff and one of the things that I have to deal with that not everybody does let me see if it has the uh, here we go this is a posi drive screw. So this is different than a Phillips bit. And a lot of the machines I work on, they're made over in Europe and they use the posi. So you see it has that extra little uh, fin in, in between the uh, different uh, flutes there. And so this bit, and uh, let me see, where's the other one? Sorry guys, I have to, I have to look uh, for it. There's this one, it's the number two, and I think it's this one, that's the number one. Let's see here real quick. Yeah, so the PZ1 and the PZ2, I bought these bits at the same time that I got that screwdriver. So you can tell when you get these good hardened bits like this, I mean, this is, you know, I don't know how many millions of screws these guys have attacked, but they, it does, you know, work out better for you in the, in the long run. Uh, it's just something that's really kind of cool, uh, to have stuff that lasts. Uh, this is a bit that might be interesting to some of you. Uh, this one is by Bosch and it's the PHR2, which is a Phillips and Robertson number two. So they modified this, uh, you know, bit so it should fit into a uh, Phillips and a uh, square drive, uh, you know, kind of interesting little thing. That's the compact model. In this guy, I have one of the other uh, models uh, of it, and it's the the same thing. I think this one was impact rated. Was the uh, was the difference? If I can get the this to show up but yeah so it does again the this is the p2r2 so it does both it does uh phillips and robertson so just so for you guys that deal with robertson on a daily basis uh it's kind of a kind of a really neat uh concept that they came up with and as far as i know bosch is the only one that makes those but that was all for you pete uh, just wanted to show you some of my favorite stuff. Uh, I've been trying to get these multi-tool reviews out of the way. And so we already did 
the Gerber suspension NXT. Uh, and the next one that I have is this Leatherman Rev. But I got out all of my multi-tools and we're gonna review this little guy too. Uh, but I got, because I've gotten so much mail and comments and stuff about these uh, tools and everything and everybody's asking me questions about it. I thought, you know what, let me just pull out all my multi-tools. Let's go over this. Uh, it's gonna take a little while, so grab a bag of popcorn, you know, pause it now if you need to, uh, or if you gotta deal with trick-or-treaters or something, but it's it's okay. But uh, I was talking to Gizmo Car about this one here, and this is just the Gerber multiplier. Uh, this was, you know, he said he got his back at around 88. I think I did the same. It was either 88, 89, uh, somewhere like that. And I got it because I liked the uh, the fact that the pliers, you know, you could just flick uh, your wrist and there you go. You got your pliers out. You don't have to unfold anything. I was like, oh, man, that's that's way cool. And it is. It's way cool until you slip off of your fastener and then you realize that your handles actually will go all the way together. Uh, but I think I had told you guys in a previous uh, video that I had that what I did to combat that was if you get out this little lanyard thing, it kind of stays in that position and then that will stop or act as a stop for your pliers. You can still force them closed because this does fold all the way out, but if you kind of put it in a half stop position, then it will, you know, kind of, uh, kind of stop your pliers from pinching you. But that was what I figured out on my own. Uh, like I said, in my other video where I talked about this tool, I kind of keep it in the garage. I still uh, use it from time to time. I really liked the blades that they had on here. The serrated edge uh, blade is very handy. And I like this uh, clip point that they had. Uh, that's probably one of the best uh, clip points uh, that I've had on a multi-tool. This is a, a really good thing. But with the multi-tools, you know, it was kind of like a, a, I guess my philosophy with them was that I was carrying them to try to replace tools that I was carrying in my tool pouch or my tool bag. And I thought, wow, if I can have five or six or seven of these tools, you know, then it's better than carrying, you know, one of each kind of a tool. Uh, but then, you know, screwdrivers that can give you different bits and have bit carriers and stuff. This kind of has taken the place of any kind of multi-tools that I have. And I have more use for a uh, longer, either a longer needle nose plier or a, uh, I have a smaller, like fine uh, pair of needle t needle nose pliers that will go for you know, any kind of uh, delicate work, like getting off little uh, E-clips and C-clips and stuff like that that are a big pain in the butt. Uh, but they, uh, you know, work well if you have a, a nice little small pair of pliers. Uh, but these are generally uh, too big for, for that kind of work. And then I, if I do have uh, nuts and bolts now, I carry that uh, Knipex, uh plier the uh, little small it's the 180 millimeter uh the uh water pump pliers and that is you know what i carry but anyway so i went from this guy uh to the blast and you know i've gone over this in other videos and stuff and the blast is a, is a good one this was you know it's kind of boxy but it has the finger groove cutouts and stuff and this was a this was a good uh, multi-tool for me. Uh, one of the things that I really liked about it was the uh, scissors. I thought that these scissors were uh, very capable and it, they've always worked and I liked them. The, uh, you know, we already talked about the ones on the uh, wingman that didn't work uh, very well. And this is a, this is a nice little thing, but it tells its age, you know, I mean, it's, it's more boxy. Multi-tools today are not as boxy. And this one also had a really good blade, very similar to the one on the uh, Gerber. So this was this was definitely a good tool. And because of the design, your handles and your jaw meet up here. 
and you don't pinch your hand if you slide off of the bolt. But again, they're not spring loaded, so you know you have to manipulate the uh, the pliers yourself. And then we here we have our wingman, and with our wingman again, the reason I liked it was it was the uh, spring loaded, but also it had a pocket clip. So now I could do away with the sheath. I laid all these sheaths uh, back here uh, behind the rat, uh, and we'll talk about those a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so this way I didn't have to have this on my belt. I could have it either in the tool bag and secured with the clip or in my pocket and secured with the clip. And, you know, this one, we'll talk about it because the, uh, the NXT, which we went over, of course, is uh, spring loaded. Uh, this tool changed my mind about Gerber multi-tools. When I had this uh, Gerber tool, that's why I went to Leatherman because I was pinching my hand and I just wasn't interested in, you know, Gerber designs. I was like, you know, I'll just pass on them. They didn't seem as good as what I could get from a Leatherman. Uh, but this one here definitely changed my mind. If I was going to uh, get a multi-tool today, I definitely would uh, look at this one. I also want to look at the uh, center drive one. And I am now thinking maybe I might want to look at one of the uh, arm bar ones because, you know, they're interesting designs. And I think that Gerber's kind of taken the lead in design on these uh, on these multi-tools. I think Leatherman was kind of at the top of their game. I think they are not so much. Uh, but this Leatherman Rev, uh, one of the things I thought was weird is that this leg is thinner than the other leg. And I don't know uh, why they thought that that was a, a good idea. In a way, it replaces the wingman, uh, I think, in their lineup. But the uh, but this is not uh, spring-loaded plier. But it does have this kind of funky uh, thing. The uh, plier head, you know, it's it's fine. It's okay. I didn't really have any kind of issues with it. It does have a pocket clip, which I think is is handy. Uh, you can get the uh, knife from the outside, and it's got the thumb hole way up in there, which this fools you because this is uh, hollow right there. So when you go to grab it, sometimes you'll grab the wrong uh, place on the uh, handle. So that's kind of confusing uh, in a way. I don't think that they should have uh, two hollows, you know, for your thumb to grab to. Uh, then you have your other tools that you can get to. Uh, these are just your fold-out tools, but you have a, a, a can opener and the uh, file and then the uh, package opener, which is one of my favorite tools on the uh, wingman. That's why I always say that this is a great little uh, tool for uh, opening the clamshell packages at Christmas and when we had little kids, that was, uh, this was the Christmas tool of choice was that, you know, plus you had screwdrivers and stuff like that. You do have a couple of uh, screwdrivers over here. You have a 2D Phillips and a uh, flathead. Uh, really, this is a very minimalist set. If you, I, I don't know how much these revs are retailing for. I don't think they're as expensive as, you know, the Wave or some of the other ones. But I don't think I would purchase this because this is like way too minimalist uh, for me. When I talk about a minimalist multi-tool, I'm just going to lay this guy right here. I'm talking about the uh, Skeletool. The Skeletool is a perfect minimalist tool. And again, I liked it because it had the uh, pocket clip. It has this... Uh, bottle opener or you can clip it onto something here but then you actually have interchangeable bits uh, that can go in here and it fits with the uh, bit kits and it comes with an extra uh, bit in the uh, one leg yeah right here so you can have bit storage if you wanted to you know have a, a different bit this one has the upgraded blade with the uh, 154 CM, uh, which 
I think this, if you're going to buy a Skeletool, get the one with the upgraded blade because that's really worth it. Uh, I, I think that you can't go wrong with uh, the Skeletool if you want just a minimum tool because, I mean, really, that's, that's what you're getting. But for me, because this is lightweight, uh, I, I would prefer this over the, uh, the Rev because this is minimal and it's not bulky where that is minimal and it's kind of bulky. So in my mind, I think this is the way to go on that. And speaking of these lightweight heads, uh, one of the guys wrote to me and said that they've had like three of these, you know, snap and break. I just wanted to let you know that, you know, that's not an uncommon problem with uh, some of these Leathermans because I was working with a guy and he was using a uh, Super Tool 300 and he was bearing down on a bolt and he was going down and the bottom jaw just snapped and the whole thing just came apart. So uh, even on what everybody would kind of, you know, I don't think anybody would label the Super Tool 300 as a lightweight tool or one that's not very heavy duty, uh, but they break too. You know, so I mean, that's just uh, one of those things that you'll have to look out for. But the Rev, I, you know, like I said, if I was in the market for a tool, I would definitely go for the NXT over this guy. There's not really a lot that uh, is appealing to me in this package at all. Uh, so for this, you know, uh, Leatherman loses uh, on this one. It's, uh, it's not a good uh, multi-tool to me. Uh, and of course, this is just my opinion, guys, and I took it to work and that's all I can tell you. Leatherman Wave, this is still my standard tool that I carry uh, in my backpack. Uh, I did put a pocket clip on it. It's really too heavy for pocket carry, and that's why it lives in my backpack. Uh, it's more, it goes with my stuff when I um, just got my small bag, like if I'm going to just work on a PC or if I'm going to work on just some networking stuff. I might grab this instead of my whole tool bag. Uh, of course, you have all your, your blades. You got the, the serrated blade. You got the uh, file that's on here. Uh, it's been a while since I had to mess with this on camera. It's, it's so different when you have it in your hand versus that. But you have your file, which is a good four-way file because you have uh, you know filing on, on every edge of this uh, file. So you can find something there. It has really one of the best uh, blades, I think, on any multi-tool. This uh, blade they put on the Wave is just absolutely awesome. And I love the uh, shape of it, how it looks, and it's uh, very handy. And, of course, that was the good thing about the Wave was that uh, everything was accessible from the outside. And, of course, you get a saw also, which is another reason why it goes with me for just such emergencies. But this has probably the smoothest action of all the uh, non-spring-loaded uh, ones. Uh, I like it that it, you know, I bought one. This is before they came out with the uh, re removable uh, wire cutters and stuff. And I've heard from several of you that that's been a, a thing that breaks a lot on these multi-tools and stuff. And then, of course, we have all our tools that are down in here. And I bought uh, for my Leatherman, I did go ahead and spring and get the uh, bit clip. Or, and it's uh, it's worked out a, a lot. If I need, if I'm somewhere and you just need like something real quick, like a Torx or something, uh, you do have that. Uh, speaking of these uh, sheaths back here, this was the one that came on the, uh, the Gerber multiplier. Uh, so that was from way back in the day. And this one came with the Leatherman Blast because it had no uh, means for uh, being carried in uh, on your pocket as a pocket clip. And this guy still uh, rides in my uh, car to this day. So I still have that one. But the last one that we had to talk about is this little guy here. And he has a pocket clip. He also comes with a belt sheath if you like having a belt sheath. I used him just with the uh, pocket clip. He's not really any heavier than the Wingman. Uh, this is made by, I'm going to call it Sui Pro. I don't know how they 
how they actually uh, pronounce this, but it's got the uh, the colored scales on the one side, and it's basically just a kind of a knockoff. This has the replaceable wire cutter jaws. It is spring loaded. I did like the little uh, the little snake on there. That's kind of a nice uh, decorative touch. Uh, this guy is very much kind of like. Uh, the uh, wave and stuff. One of the things I thought was interesting was their tool choices. They chose a number one Phillips and it is a 3D, but I don't know why they chose a number one over a number two because number two is much more common. Uh, they do give you an all, which uh, most uh, multi-tools that I know of do not have an all. So it's kind of an interesting uh, set on there. And then they have all of these tools which you have your uh, can opener with a uh, screwdriver, a uh, cap lifter with a screwdriver there, and then this little uh, hook, which I guess you can use for uh, strings and uh, maybe opening clamshells or anything else that you'd use a hook type uh, blade to. Uh, we'll take a look at their outboard tools. So you have this uh, knife, you know, which is... Uh, Kind of a, a nice little, uh, I, I'd say it's more of a coping uh, blade than a uh, than a Warncliffe. But if you guys disagree, let me know in the comments. Uh, and then you have over here some uh, scissors. And these scissors are a lot like the uh, wingman scissors that just, you know, they're okay. They work, but uh, I had trouble uh with uh, trusting that they would uh work but yeah that's uh what they give you for your uh for your tools uh, let me close these properly and so this one it, it's good it's an alternative if you're into a budget multi-tool maybe you can't afford a gerber or a leatherman i know that they're getting pricey uh but this would be a you know good uh Alternate. I would take this guy over the uh, Leatherman Rev also, even with the uh, number one screwdriver. Uh, but I would consider this more of a light duty home use tool, not one I would take, uh, you know, out on the, uh, out on, on, you know, any kind of job or anything that was a, a real heavy duty job. So I did take it there. Uh, as you guys can see, I have my uh, SMKW Sasquatch uh, sticker down here, and that's because I did get uh, some stuff. And I got to tell you, this little guy, uh, some people call it the angry watermelon. Some people call it the danger pickle. I'm going to name mine the Green Hornet because, number one, I liked the Green Hornet TV show when I was a kid. Uh, and then uh, number two, I had a, a Green Hornet as my uh, first car. So... But yeah, this little Rough Rider uh, Tadpole, this is a fun little knife, and the uh, the fidget factor is through the roof. Uh, I can see why JB says he hasn't put it down since he got his, and I take this little guy uh, just about everywhere since I got it uh, just the other day. So it's uh, been a fun little knife. So if you don't have one, uh, get one. I do want to tie a lanyard for it. Uh, one of the things that this could benefit from is a pocket clip, and I think it would be a perfect little knife to have on a pocket clip. But I don't know if they're going to ever plan to uh, release such or make such, but it would be a, a fun little uh, pocket clip uh, carry. Anyways, this is it for uh, the multi-tool reviews. But check out my description box. Uh, I have another video linked in there. It's uh, a collaboration that I was doing with Mark Kaufman. And uh, he did a restoration on that uh, old timer, the USA made one that I picked up off of eBay. That was, it's pretty, pretty trashed uh, when I got it. And so, you know, you can look back at my project restoration video if you want to. And he linked to it in his video. But uh you can look at that and see what he's done to it. I think he did a fantastic job and there will be a video forthcoming on that when that comes in. But man, this is a, this is a long video. This is the longest I think I've ever, uh, ever had a video. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, happy Halloween to everyone. And uh, hey, I will see you all in the uh, next one. Talk to you guys later. Bye.